Back to that same old place. Spectrum. Oh, no. <laughs> Hi, this is Z Noodles. We are with Jen Deer and Water. She is an activist for people's rights. Well, I live on a farm and care a lot for the environment. And I know that you care for people's rights and what they're called and that sort of stuff. Are you an activist for other things? Um. Well, yeah, I kind of do a lot of stuff. Um, I work as a journalist um, and I, I use my voice as a journalist as a way to tell the stories of my communities, um, which are often, we're not often heard from um, and we're not often included in the press. But along with that, I do some community organizing work um, and I myself, so I'm a citizen of the Cherokee Nation of Oklahoma. I'm multiply disabled. Um, I'm also queer identified, I'm bisexual and I'm two-spirit. So I do a lot of work in those communities and around the issues that we are all facing as well. So I wear a lot of hats and my, my toes are kind of dipped in all over the place. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Who is your biggest influence? Oh, that's a hard question. <laughs> um, oh. You know, I'm gonna go with my maternal grandma. Um, I called her DG. I, I don't know why, but when I was little, that was what I called her and it just kind of stuck. Um, I, I'm gonna say her because she was the first person to really encourage me to write um, when I was really young. I think I was maybe four years old. Uh, I'd had this dream about fairies and flowers and things and I wanted to write it down and have a story, but I didn't know how to write yet. So my DG was my scribe. I told her what to write and she wrote it down. So I think I would say her because she's been such a big influence in my life and in helping to motivate me to go to college, study music, be a writer, all these really great things. Hello, Jen, Hi. my name's Salem. And I was wondering, can you Give me some more insight about what you think about genders. Sure. Um, so I'm just going to speak from my experience. Um, so my gender is actually two spirit. Um, and the term two spirit, it's a, a modern English language term that was created to um, give awareness and give voice to all of the different genders that a lot of our tribal nations had before white people came to our lands. Um, so like my people, we had more than two genders. A lot of tribal nations had more than just, you know, man or woman as genders. Um, and, and with that also came a lot of very specific roles. So like me as a two spirit is not the same as if, you know, for me as like a bisexual. I mean, one, one is gender identity, the other is sexual orientation. But there are different roles and expectations. Like two spirit people played different roles during ceremony. We raised orphaned children. We have brought in a lot for negotiations, whether it's within our families or it's been with the US government. Um, but yeah, I think gender is so much more than just male or female or man or woman. Um, and I think that everyone's gender should be respected. And I think that we need to, as a society in a world, stop thinking and limiting ourselves to just two ways of being because that's not enough. It's just not. Thank you for that. That was nice to hear. Yeah. Hi. Hi, Jen. Hi. I'm Hi. Lily, and I would like to ask you um, what you most enjoy about your job. Hmm. I guess I would say probably some of the amazing people that I get to meet. Um, it gets really easy to feel sometimes like this world is just a really ugly place and there aren't many good people in it. Um, 
it can get depressing sometimes doing the work I do and knowing the things I know, but I get to meet so many incredible people and I get to talk to so many incredible people and see all of the work that they're doing. I mean, just like what you all are doing with this show is amazing. So I think that's probably the favorite thing about my job that, that I really love. What is the most interesting part of um, the most interesting party or group of people you've spoken in front of? Hmm. You know, I'm not sure. Um, I did in November. It was, I think it was either October or November of last year, 2019. I gave a couple of talks at Oberlin College, which is in Ohio. Um, and that was a lot of fun. You know, I got to talk with a lot of the students and was even able to have dinner with some of them. With some of them. And uh, yeah, I think yeah, that's, I think that's, that's probably one of my funner my funner speaking to people. Speaking to people. So, um, is there a language you want to learn to tell more people about what you do? Is there a language I want to learn? Um, you know, I studied Spanish in high school and college, and then I took some French and Italian in college, and I've been kind of trying to learn my own language, um, the Cherokee language. It's really hard for me to learn languages, though. I struggle with it a lot, but I think of the two, of the languages I wish that I was fluent in and that I'm trying to at least be conversational in is... Um, Spanish and then Cherokee, which is my people's language. And there's a lot of work being done by a lot of native people to revitalize their languages because they were criminalized and a, and a lot of us were not allowed to speak them. And so as a result, a lot of us don't actually speak our languages. So there's a, a big push for us to try to learn and to start teaching our children really young as well. I hope it goes well with you learning your language. Thank you. <laughs> um, I'll say hello in my language, which is OCO. O-S-I-Y-O. -O. So OCO. You all now know a Cherokee word. <laughs> what was your first car and when did you get it? Um, my first car, is that what you said? Yeah. Okay, so I was 16 um, and I went to high school in Abilene, Texas, which is, you know, kind of West Texas. There's rattlesnakes and cactus and things. Uh, but my first car was this itty bitty kind of bright blue Geo Metro, um, which if you look it up, it's a teeny tiny little car. And I unfortunately got into a car accident and totaled it within only a few months of having it. <laughs> so then my next car was this really ugly yellow hatchback Ford Escort. Um, so yeah, <laughs> those were my first cars. So I was wondering, what is your favorite like um, Native American snack to eat? Oh, well, Kind of like I said earlier, we have lots of different tribes and lots of different foods and things that we eat. Um, you know, I don't know. I don't know how to answer that. I am <laughs> awfully fond of fry bread, um, but I didn't grow up eating it. So it's 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 still kind of, um, it's a treat, but something I, I wasn't raised with. What's, what's fry bread? So fry bread, um, I'm going to show you with my hands. It's usually mm -hmm. about kind of this big-ish, like the size, it can be the size of like a corn up to like a big flour tortilla. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, and so it's made with flour. Traditionally, it's made with flour, lard, and milk. Um, you basically just make like a, a dough and then you deep fry it until it starts to get kind of poofy. Um, it's actually not a traditional food for us. It's a food that many of our people had to eat after the U.S. government took away our, our own food supplies. And they left us with something called commodity boxes. And it's a program through the federal government where they distribute a box of food to families on reservations. Um, however, the food is generally very unhealthy. Um, it's not like what our ancestors ate. Um, and sometimes the food they deliver is even rotten. 
Um, but that's that's kind of where things like fried bread or bannock, which is a similar kind of food, have come from. They've come out of they're kind of a survival food, basically. Well, it sounds good. It is tasty. It's not healthy for you at all, <laughs> but it's really good. <laughs> so Memorial Day just happened yesterday. Um, is there a Native American Memorial Day? Um, well, I want to start by saying that every tribal nation is different. Um, so we have 574 federally recognized tribes in the U.S. And then we also have state recognized tribes and tribes that also don't have recognition. And so just to give you a, a quick glimpse of what recognition means, it means that the U.S. government or a state government sees us as a valid native nation. Um, there's a lot of problems yeah. with that process, but anyway, um, so every tribe is different. Um, you know, we have different holidays, different ceremonies, way of celebrating and honoring our people and our ancestors. Um, but in terms of Memorial Day, that that's really everyone's holiday in the United States, including oh. Native people. Um, something a lot of people don't know is that Native people actually serve in the U.S. military at the highest rates of any other ethnic or racial group. Um, and we have fought in every single war <laughs> that's happened on this land. So Memorial Day is still for Native people. That's pretty cool. Oh, I just thought because they've had wars with immigrated people, so they might have veterans and that sort of thing when yeah. America was starting. Yeah, we have a lot of veterans. If you go to, I mean, unfortunately, our powwows are not happening right now because of the COVID-19 pandemic. But if you go to yeah. powwows, um, it's really common that our native vets actually bring in the powwow and open the powwow grounds. Um, so just about any native event you're going to go to, there's going to be some way that they honor native veterans. And that includes those that actually were in the U.S. military and also our veterans who fought in other wars and maybe weren't necessarily fighting with the U.S. military. Right. Is there a motto that you live by or a quote? Um, there is one lately that's really been on my mind a lot. Um, let me see if I can quickly find it because I, I can never quite remember it and I want to make sure I say it to you all properly. Um, let's see. Okay, so here it is. It's um, Zora Neale Hurston is the person who said this. And it's, if you're silent about your pain, about your pain they'll kill you and say you enjoyed it. And so for me, that's part of what keeps me going doing the work that I do. Um, because my communities suffer from hyper erasure, meaning that most people don't recognize us or think about us. Um, but we're still but we're dealing, still with, dealing a with a lot of oppression and violence. violence. Uh, are, are you all hearing feedback from me right now? Because I'm hearing it. Yeah. There was a moment of okay. it. It got, it got better, though, all of a sudden, too. Okay. <laughs> all right, good. So um, let me start my answer again. Um, so for me, with that quote um, from Zora Neale Hurston, it's just a way of, reminding myself that whether I stay quiet, I take the safer approach to just sit and be quiet and not stand up and fight, the system is still going to kill me some way or another, but instead they'll be able to paint it as if I was okay with what happened. And so that's, that's a big part of the work I do is just reminding people that silence in, in this complicity and complicity means death for a lot of people and so I I won't be silent I'm somebody who's gonna stand up and fight and make a lot of noise that's a really cool quote I like it <laughs> it's a great quote yeah the meaning behind it is really 
cool too. Yeah, um, Zora Neale Hurston was a black woman and a writer. So you all should look her up and learn some more about her when you have a chance. I will. So, would you rather have a rewind button or a pause button on your life? <laughs> um, I'm sorry, I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing because that's such a great question and one I don't think anyone's ever asked me. Um, I would say pause. A pause button would be nice. I am always really busy with work and trying to deal with some of my health issues and things. So a pause would be lovely. <laughs> Pretty snazzy, okay. What was your favorite memory with your car? My favorite memory with my car? Hmm. Well, you know, I didn't get to make a lot of memories with the first car since I totaled it. Um, the second car though, uh, one of my best friends in high school, when we were 17, we drove and went to um, Six Flags over Texas. And it was sort of like one of the first road trips I did. So we drove like two and a half, three hours to go to Six Flags. And that was a really, really fun day. Are you for or against social medias? <laughs> um, I think social media can do a lot of really amazing things and it can also really hurt people. I mean. We see with how people are trolled and sometimes our personal information is released on social media. Um, some really bad things can be done through social media, but they also do really great things like, you know, I might not have connected with you all if it weren't for social media. Um, you know, I get to help other journalists get their stories out there and promote them. Um, you know, I get to help community organizers and organizations who are fundraising by sharing their, their fundraisers on social media. You know, I get to bring attention to the world, really, about the work that I do and the work of other people. So I, I think that we need to be a little bit more cautious how we see social media, but I also think it's a pretty great thing, too. Yeah, I can agree with that. <laughs> how COVID-19 has impacted your life in a good way. In a good way, oof. <laughs> um, you know, I think I'm gonna be very cautious how I try to answer this because I don't want it to come across as if, you know, I'm happy we're in the midst of a pandemic, I'm not. But, you know, I live in Washington, D.C. And we have a fair amount of pollution in this area and it's only getting worse because of pipelines and fracking and cracker plants and, and different things. Um, but since this pandemic, we have had good air quality days here at DC um, consistently. And I'm, I'm very asthmatic. So there are some days I just can't even go outside. But right now, I mean, we're seeing the earth is doing so much better with less people and cars and whatnot out on the roads. So I think that's probably one of the things where I feel like I have benefited from COVID-19. Well, thank you for answering my questions. And a couple weeks ago, a couple weeks ago, I changed my wet water segment, which I started near the beginning of this podcast. Uh, I changed it to wet paper. And have you ever made homemade paper? I have not. Have you? Yes. That's really cool. What do you have to do to make it? Uh, I have to drain the pulp. And that's all I remember because that's the part I was in charge of. Gotcha. Why, why are nachos your favorite? Um, so... Where I grew up, so I grew up in rural areas of Oklahoma and Texas, um, and along with there being, especially in Oklahoma, a pretty sizable native population, there's actually a lot of um, folks from Mexico, or, or what we call Mexico. So I grew up getting to eat a lot of really great Mexican food, and nachos are not real Mexican food, it's an Americanized thing. Nachos are not real I just love it, I love Mexican food. It reminds me of home, it's a comfort food, and I just really love nachos. I love, like, the cheese and the meat and the beans and the crunchy chips and... <laughs> what 
What are some of your favorite snacks? Mm. I like I like mochi chips, which are, are like a kind of fried dough, so they're really crunchy, and then they have this really nice flavoring to them. So that's my favorite snack. And what was they're it Japanese. called? They're Japanese. Mochi chips. Okay. Mochi chips? I did, I've never heard of that. I know of mochi ice cream, but I've never heard of mochi chips. That's pretty neat. Yeah, they're savory for some reason. They're like an unflavored mochi dough, and then they're fried, and then have that, salt and spices. That sounds delicious. I'm going to have to find some of those. <laughs> Mine is probably... Uh, Mango ice cream. Mango. That's good. Have you had mango and sticky rice? Yes. I love, I love it. Sticky. Isn't it good? <laughs> My favorite snack is any kind of Oreo. Any kind of Oreo? What about dog Oreos? And maybe not any <laughs> I haven't had an, had an Oreo in a really long time. Oh yeah, Jude. For your homemade paper, remember when we made these in Intermediate? Mm. Yes, I do remember those. Oh, made oh that's sweet. Made an Earth Day ones. Out of paper. The best kind of Oreo is a deep fried Oreo. Yes. Oh, I've never had a deep fried Oreo. I'm kind of afraid of them. That just sounds so unhealthy. Oh, they're delicious. <laughs> They're just at your, they're just, they usually sell them at fairs. Carnival? Yeah, I've seen them at fairs and mm. festivals and markets and things. And I also, oh, it just seems so I like unhealthy. It's I like the American food. identity, really crappy food. We've got a legacy that we have to continue, don't you know? <laughs> um, so my mom told me, this was several years ago, she went to the Tulsa State Fair, that's in Tulsa, Oklahoma. It's the second largest city in Tulsa. And so I grew up going to it as a kid. And several years ago, they had vendors there selling fried sticks of butter. Yes. Oh. Oh. I've had that before. Oh, God. That makes sense. <laughs> Not the greatest thing ever. Don't try it. <laughs> I didn't intend Ooh. on it. <laughs> it sounds like a heart attack waiting to happen. <laughs> oh, it is. <laughs> that, that sounds like you eat it and then you go to the hospital or something. Eat it and then it, and then it melts like the butter in your stomach. Mm hmm. I like pretty much anything with the Reese's logo on it. <laughs> Ooh. Reese's Pieces. I do love some Reese's Pieces. Ooh. And and peanut butter MMs. I have a problem with Reese's. What is it, Nolan? On Easter, you know how they have like the big carrot ones? Yep. Whenever I see one of those, it's gone in at least like three minutes. <laughs> okay, so it's the good kind of problem. You know, like sometimes, one time when I was little, I just went like, I just cut the bottom and I was just like, yeah. <laughs> I have a real problem with candy. <laughs> well, that's okay. <laughs> You know, I don't keep peanut butter M&Ms in the house because I know I'll eat an entire bag at once. So sometimes there are just foods like that that we love and eat a little too much of. Thanks for watching.